Let's talk about homes. So home, it's our fortress. It's the place where we live, the place that we really get to make our own. And they're very personal to us. They're sort of a symbol of what we are, who we are, made up of the things that we put inside them. So the things that we buy, the things that we make, reminders of our experiences and who we are. And every year, we've been adding more technology into our homes. And I've been realizing that we've been actually losing a lot of the unique physical designs due to this technology. Take, for example, digital photo frames, televisions, tablets, computers. All these devices are going against the level of personalization and the choice that we're used to in our homes. Now, I believe that we as entrepreneurs, designers, creatives, if we follow a business and design principle called open hardware, I think that we can get back this level of personalization and choice in our products. So, open hardware, it takes a lot of the lessons from open platforms, like Google's Android mobile operating system, where you can customize it, you can add new features, change the user interface, the experience, remove features, and stuff like this. Very open and flexible. For example, uh, Amazon, they have a tablet that runs on Google's Android that's taken away a lot of the features and has really streamlined it to make it useful for their own services and things like this. And this is great because it allows us as other companies not to spend the time or the money developing the skills or this software. Sounds great. <clears throat> so if we take these principles and we apply them to hardware instead, we'd get, say, a physical product or a physical technology that we can build upon, add custom cases, add new features, remove features, make things cheaper, make things different, recombine things. So let me illustrate you uh, this with an example. Take digital photo frames. So the devices that we can upload or we can store thousands of photos, display them around the home or in the office, wherever. Now, if we were to design something like this, say with open hardware principles, we'd be able to very basically you know, put on a, a new case, very sort of standard stuff. But what gets really interesting is if manufacturers, the people who originally designed these products, then sell the sub-assemblies, sell the components, let people really get into the actual hardware, we can start having really unique things. For example, we could design cases with different navigational elements, stuff where you don't need to know the electronics or the programming to be able to design the physical features. Or recombine modules, add bits together, and create something that we've never seen before in digital photo frames. New layouts, new shapes, new sizes, everything that we're used to with normal photo frames and normal products. And then from a technology perspective, if you're a little bit more tech savvy, you could end up going in, changing the components, making things cheaper or more powerful, stuff like that. So that's what I really mean by open hardware. Again, the level of customization and flexibility that we're used to with online world and our electro electronics. <clears throat> so we've already seen examples of open hardware, but on a smaller scale, things like mobile phone cases. A lot of us might have them. It offers a great level of personalization, really gets to make the device yours, but also offers the functions of flexibility. The thing is, these devices, these phones, aren't completely designed for people to open them and customize them in terms of their physical appearance. It's very limited in what we can do. I mean, about 10 years ago, we had some really interesting designs with, say, like the Nokia 3310 and all these old phones where you could actually take off the front and the back cover so you can make unique flush designs and interfaces. <coughs> but we're also seeing changes in sort of the electronic sides. Units like the Raspberry Pi and Arduino, which allows programmers and software developers to be able to connect their services up into physical products, which is great. It means you don't need to know anything about electronics to be able to get something that's, you know, that works in a physical sense. But I think we can go further. I think we can do more. I think we can design hardware so you still don't need to be a programmer or software developer to be able to open up and plan this. And I think this becomes especially important as we adopt technology more and we start adopting the, uh, the smart home as sort of our standard homes. So what I think we need to really change open hardware and go something in a different direction is a new business model to, to tackle this. So if we sort of see with this diagram, we have the manufacturers, the people who are developing the core technology. Say it's with this digital photo frame example. You know, you design your product, you can sell it straight to the consumers. Great, awesome, just like normal. But to really change it and to really open it up for people who have no expertise in electronics or software, if you sell the modules, the components, the screens, the sub-assemblies and things like this to all sorts of people like studios, creatives, hobbyists, just people who want to make something for their mum for Christmas or whatever, this is when we really get a whole new range of products because it just becomes accessible for people. And if we mimic some of the success factors of open platforms like uh, the app stores and things like this, 
So if people are designing products based on your technology, why not offer a storefront, sell that te technology as well? You're basically diversifying and extending your product line without having to do much at all. Great, everyone's a winner. The small companies have a place to sell it as well. And if we look from the other side of it, for these studios, these small companies, the people who don't necessarily have the electronics or the time to learn the software and the development side, this is great. It means you can just buy small components, do what you're great at doing, the hardware side. You can start with one, maybe designing one for yourself, for your friend, for your family. Start selling things in markets and getting bigger and stuff like this. Because we've seen, as with normal app stores, that loads of companies have started up because they made it so accessible for people to start designing apps and things like this that loads of companies started sprouting up. And we could do exactly the same with hardware, make it easy and accessible for people, and we get a lot more innovative and differenti differentiated companies. Now, there's alternatives. We don't just have to follow an open hardware approach. I mean, we could carry on with things as they are at the moment. So maybe some of the big companies who design the technology and the products for us. Maybe we'll be living in an Apple house with eye windows and eye, eye mirrors, eye clocks, eye anything. Then again, we might be seeing the continued rise of smaller technology development companies, so the people who are taking the time to learn all these skills and develop these products, and especially with crowdfunding and crowdsourcing websites. We're seeing a big rise in this type of thing. But then again, we could just be retrofitting technology onto the products we already have. But all these solutions, they still don't offer us the level of personalization and customization that we really want in our homes. So, open hardware. It doesn't just have to be down with homes, but there's a potential to innovate across a whole range of things, from digital mirrors, lights, open speakers, wi uh, wireless speakers, tablets, TVs, all sorts. Now, I wanted to come here today to speak and to try and make you think that instead of just opening up your software, if you open up our hardware as well, we can really collaborate together, together, innovate, and come up with a whole new range of technology products for our home. Thank you.